Hey everybody, uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to get into the room and into the video. And you can see what we're doing here today. Today, we're just doing a little question and answer session. So anybody who joins, anybody who comes in, can just ask questions and we'll be answering them. So yeah, it's pretty simple. So as soon as you come in the room, just uh, send me a message. Just let me know that you can see me and you can hear me. All right? Just write it in the chat. Write me and let me know if you can see me or if you can hear me, or both. If you can't hear me, I guess then you won't know and you won't write anything, right? <laughs> so yeah, so you can just leave a comment and let me know that you can see the video and you hear what I'm saying. All right, I'm just waiting for a few more people to get into the room. I see uh, someone wrote, hi, hey, how's it going? So as soon as you come into this room, you can just go ahead and uh, leave a comment and you can start asking questions because today we are just doing open question and answer and um, yeah, so that's our topic for today. So I'm gonna answer your questions. Whatever questions you have, I'm gonna answer them, all right? And that might be questions about studying English, about learning English. It might be questions about uh, teaching English, okay? You can ask any kind of question that you want. So, all right, let's see. It's, it looks like we've got someone here from Mexico, someone from Brazil. Any plans to come to Brazil? No, I don't have any plans to come to Brazil yet, but, uh, you know, it's definitely in my dreams. I'd love to do it sometime in the future. I don't have any plan for it right now, though. All right, let's see. Where else are people from today who are joining us? Where is everybody from? And what questions do you have? What is most difficult for you when you're learning English? What's most difficult for you? And while you're thinking about an answer to that, uh, I just want to let you know that you can add me to your friends on Facebook. Um, and that way you can see all my posts because I post about studying English and learning English. I post about it a lot. So if you want, you can add me to your uh, friend list. First question I see here, where are you from? I'm from the United States. My name's Chris and I'm from the United States and I've been teaching for about 10 years. Um, so yeah. Let's see, I'm from Rome. Oh, cool, I used to live in Italy. I love Italy. All right, so here we have a question, finally, about uh, the future. Here we have a question about the future, and um, let's see, can you explain the future? Okay, great, about English, finally. Okay, so when we're speaking about the future, the first thing that we need to understand is, you know, at school, I think the first thing that people learn when they're learning English about future is, will right so at first people just say will 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 and it doesn't sound very natural okay everybody understands you everybody understands you but it doesn't sound natural so you can say will just so, so people understand but it's not correct all the time it would be more correct for us to say going to or sometimes just to use present continuous, right? So let's talk about the difference between those things, all right? Um, and I see more questions coming in. I'll get to other questions very soon, but first I'm gonna go in order, okay? The first question I saw, that's what we're talking about right now. We're talking about the future. So when do we use will? We use will about promises, all right? So if someone says, um, I will love you forever, that's a promise, and we say will. We use will about predictions for the future, like Nostradamus. We can say, uh, it will rain tomorrow. And okay, this, is, this means that we think it will rain tomorrow. That's our prediction. We can also use will to, uh, to say some things like an instant decision, a very fast decision. For example, if we are if we are at a restaurant and the waiter comes to us and says, what would you like to eat? You can say, hmm, fast decision. I just decided right now. I'll have a steak. I'll have a steak. 
So that's when we can use will also. We could also use will if we're making an offer to help someone. For example, uh, you see a young lady with a heavy bag and you say, I'll help you with that. Or maybe you want to open the door for someone. You say, I'll open the door for you. This is an offer to help and we use will. All right, so those are the, those are the situations when we should use will, but more often than not, we use going to, right? Going to is about plans. Going to can also be about predictions, but usually going to is more about, usually going to is more about plans. And if you use will about plans, it will sound very strange, okay? So I see lots of questions coming into the chat right now, lots of questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer a lot of them, okay? So don't worry if I didn't answer you yet. Um, but, you know, someone asked me a very long uh, question about the future, so it's important to address that, to talk about that. And I just wanna remind you guys that, uh, you know, if you have any other questions or things that we don't talk about in the video, you can add me to your friends. So just go to Facebook, uh, you know, my link on Facebook is actually facebook.com slash Chris Americos, or you can find my link in the description to this video. So just go there, click on the link, and add me to your friends. So, great guys. Uh, let's see, another thing that we, we need to talk about here is if you are a teacher of English and you're watching this video right now, um, then I have some really useful advice for you. I have set up lots of different teaching businesses and uh, now I teach other teachers how to set up a teaching business. And I have a free mini course where I show you how to set up a teaching business. So um, I'll actually send the link to that in the chat. And now I'm going to get back to some of the questions that people have been having here. Great. So guys, um, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna answer some of these questions. Let's see. I see there's a question here. Can't add you to friends, you've reached the friend limit. Okay, well you can, uh, you can press follow instead of add and you'll get all the updates, everything that I post about learning English and everything like that. Um, let's see. Patricio says, thanks, Chris. I use the future like you've told us, but usually people use only will. Hmm. Well, I can tell you this, Patricio, that uh, most people who are native speakers, they don't use will a lot. Will, when we use will all the time, we sound like a robot. It's like, you know, I will go to lunch with my friends. I will see you later. It's, it sounds like a robot. It doesn't sound natural. All right. Okay. I see the next question. Dorm and campus. What's the difference between dorm and campus? Good question. Okay. So first of all, campus is about the general area where a university or maybe educational organization is located. All right. This is the general area. All the different buildings of this university, they're located in this area called the campus. And the dorm, which is short for dormitory, is the place where students live, all right? So students live in special buildings or special rooms. These are dorms or dormitories. And campus is just the area and property, the territory of the university. So yeah, so that's different. Um, Let's see, what else? Next question, past progressive versus past simple. Okay, good question. So past simple tells us only one event that's finished. It's completely finished, something that happened in the past, completely finished, done, and it will never happen again. So if I say last week, last week can never happen again. So anything that I say after last week, I probably need to say, you know, present, uh, past simple, if I'm talking about just one action and not a process. If I'm talking about some kind of process, then I need to use past progressive, right? Because 
now it's not one action that's complete, it's something that continued or repeated in the past. So if we want to focus on this process, we use past progressive. Like I was walking to school. And past simple would be I walked to school. If I say I walked to school, this shows one action in the past that's never going to happen again because you know that time period or or whatever, that is completely finished. But if I use past progressive, or I call it past continuous, uh, if I use that, then I'll say I was walking to school, and this shows that it's not completely finished, and it shows that um, it shows that maybe something interrupted this action. So, for example, I was walking to school and a dog attacked me. Now we don't know because you know was walking is not finished past continuous past progressive is not finished so we don't know if i finished walking to school or if i just laid on the ground and you know the dog had its way with me <laughs> uh so that's the difference between past progressive and past simple all right i see lots of comments here great great thank you for the support and the, the positive comments and thank you guys for watching this video it's really great you know, I'm going to ask you guys uh, who enjoy watching this video to send me a personal message on Facebook. If you like what I'm doing, if you really like this video and you like free videos on Facebook and you want me to do more of them, um, write me a message, you know, and tell me what you want to learn about, okay? Today is just question and answer. Anybody can write a question and I'll try to answer, but, uh, you know, send me a personal message on Facebook. And, and, you know, I have lots of groups on Facebook too. They're all in the description of this video. So click and go there and subscribe and check out that stuff. All right. Let's see. Explain the difference. When to use perfect times. Okay. It's a big question again. So um, let me answer a few small questions first, and then we'll come back to that. Uh, does the letter L sound in words talk or walk? Okay, I understand the question. So yes, in the words talk and walk, we don't usually pronounce the, the letter L. We don't say talk and we don't say walk, right? We say talk and walk. And these two words, that means that they have a silent letter. We don't pronounce this letter. Silent letter L. All right. Now, some people, when they want to speak very, very clearly, they might try to pronounce every letter in a word. And uh, that's usually just so they can communicate to someone who doesn't understand. Someone who doesn't understand them, they might say sounds that they usually don't say. So if someone tells you, I was talking to you, this just means that they're trying to, uh, they think that you don't understand or you didn't understand what they said. They're trying to communicate it to you. All right, guys. Uh, great. Next. The difference between lose and miss. All right. First of all, lose has a lot of different meanings and miss has a lot of different meanings. Um, but I think I understand the, the, the core problem here, the main thing that's giving you, uh, that's giving you some trouble. So um, lose is when you don't win. That's one meaning. Lose also means when you can't find something, right? So we could say the team lost the game. That's one meaning of lose. We could say um, I lost my keys. I can't find them. Um, and to lose could also be, you know, to to not have something anymore, right? Like um, you could say he lost uh, his sight. He lost his sight. He couldn't see anymore. But uh, when we talk about miss, miss has two other meanings. Miss is, for example, when we're aiming, maybe with a gun or maybe with a basketball, we're aiming at something, right? We, we have a, a basket or a target. or So we're aiming at something and we don't hit it. So like here's my target and I shoot and I go, I don't hit it. I missed it. This is one meaning of miss. And another meaning of miss is when I feel lonely and I want to see other people, all right? I want to see other people and I have this feeling in my, in my body, in my heart, right? I miss them. 
I haven't seen them in a long time and I want to see them. I miss them. I miss my family. I miss my friends, for example, like that. So that's the difference. They're, they're completely different, okay? Let's see. Here's another question. Do you speak other languages? Well, good question. Actually, you know, they say that a person who speaks two languages is bilingual. A person who speaks three languages is trilingual. And a person who speaks one language is English. <laughs> so actually, I speak English, and uh, that's my native language because I'm American. Um, and I also speak Russian because I lived in Russia and taught English in Russia for about eight years. So yeah, it was fun. And I even, I have a language center in Russia. So if there are any Russians watching or Ukrainians or Belarusians, uh, send me a message and you know I can tell you all about uh, how I teach Russian people to speak English. Um, but I also teach other people. I teach, I've taught people from Italy, from China, from Japan, from Korea, from Germany, from Spain, from lots of places. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in studying English, you can send me a message. Just add me on Facebook, send me a message. All right, let's go back to the questions from the chat. Uh, let's see, Juliet uh, says, how old are you? I am 31 years old. I know, I have a baby face, it doesn't look like it, but I'm 31 years old, I feel so old, so please, nobody else ask me how old I am. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see, Muhammad writes, tips on improving accent. Well, Muhammad, I actually have a pronunciation course uh, that will teach you how to speak like, uh, let's see, how to speak like a native speaker. Um, you can find it, online you can just search for um english hacks yeah english hacks uh let's see someone writes what about a linguist how many languages do they speak well you know a linguist doesn't mean that uh, this person is uh that, th that this person speaks a lot of languages a linguist just knows how languages work all right it's a big difference um, you can study lots of languages and know how they work and not really know how to speak them. Let's see. Hello from Poland. Hi. Have you ever been to Alaska? I haven't been to Alaska, but uh, I would love to go. I think it would be really cool, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, let's see. I see Graciela writes, uh, what can I do to become a better English teacher? Okay. so. If you want to become a better English teacher, if you want to, you know, have more students and uh, if you want to get better results for your students, then I suggest you go to this website. I'm going to send it to you right now in the chat and just join there and there's a free course and check that out. All right. So let's see who else. Also, another thing that you can do is if you want to know more about teaching English, I have a Facebook group about teaching English. So just go to the description of this video and make sure you join all the groups there, all right? Join all of the groups. Uh, let's see, I'll even, I'll even send that link too, okay? So just join the groups that are, that are in the description of this video because they're gonna help you out. And uh, if you're teaching English, then I have a lot of resources for you. And if you are, um, if you're not teaching English, if you're just, you know, studying English, then I have even more resources for you. So it'll be great. And I really look forward to working with you. All right. So here's that link. I send it in the chat. All right, guys. So let's go back to your questions. <laughs> so your questions are... Let's see, you have a good, I, res, I have respect for you. Okay, well, thank you for that comment. Let's go to the questions. Uh, cannot stop watching, thank you for your video. Well, let's see, Olia, Olia, you're very welcome. And, you know, keep asking these questions. Let's see, explain the difference between two and four. Okay, good question. So, um, two shows direction. 
So when we use a verb with movement, like the verb to go, then we need to use to. This is a big mistake that I see with a lot of people who, uh, who start teaching, uh, sorry, who are studying English. They like to say for instead of to. And when we say to, we're showing direction, okay? We can do something for a person, which means that they receive something from it. They get some kind of benefit or some, uh, you know, something good happens for them when they do this, when, when, when we do this for them. Um, so that's what for means. It means that someone else gets something, right? If we say he did it for me, I get something. He did it, but I get something. And if we say that, uh, you know, I did this for her, she gets something. So that's really the difference. Cool, guys. Um, let's see, another question. Okay, let me go back to the question I said that I would answer earlier. And, you know, there was a question about perfect tenses. And uh, I see someone wrote, your YouTube videos are so cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad that you enjoy them and, you know, you get a benefit from them. I do them for you. Um, great. So let's see. We had a question about perfect tenses. So, okay, let's talk about perfect tenses, right? We have present perfect, past perfect, future perfect, and then there's even the future continuous tenses too. Wow, it's really difficult, right? Well, present perfect is probably the most important one that you need to know. So I would say at the beginning, just learn about those. Just learn about present perfect, I mean, the first one. And then worry about the other perfect tenses. So, okay, what's the difference between perfect tenses and other tenses? Perfect tenses actually show us two points in time. Yeah, they're really cool. Perfect tenses are like time traveling. And, for example, present perfect shows us a point in the present and something before it. So there's something in the present and something before it. If we talk about past perfect, then we're talking about a point in the past and then something before it. So, for example, if I say, I have seen this movie, it means right now it's true in the present, this is my present point, that before now, I have seen this movie, I watched this movie. But if I say, I had seen that movie, then this means that we have a point in the past. So at some point in the past, it was true that before that point, I had seen the movie. So this is what perfect does. It gives us one point. So if it's present perfect, we have a present point. Past perfect, it's a past point. Future perfect, it's a future point. And then the perfect part is something that happens before that. So present point, perfect before that. Past point, perfect before that. Future point, perfect before that. That's how we understand perfect tenses. All right, guys, let's see. We have some other questions here. There's a lot of questions, a lot of people watching. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to get to all of them. If I haven't answered your question, just write it again. Just send another comment and I will try to answer. And for those of you who didn't get it the first time, I will actually go in and send you these uh, links that you need to be checking out also. All right? Great. So I'm waiting for some other questions here. And if you've got any questions, make sure you write in to me, okay? Write me a question in the comment section and I will answer. Because I'm really happy to be here and answering all your questions because that's what I just like to do. So, how does shall work? Good question, okay. Let's see, another question. How to find your videos on YouTube? There's a link to all my videos, all my pages, in the description to this video. So if you click on the video that you're watching right now, just click on the video, then you'll find more information about, uh, you know, how to find my videos, how to find my pages, even I have websites where I have free courses and things like that, so, um, go there, find those, sign up, and you know you can also send me a message on Facebook. You should follow me on Facebook first, so you see all my posts and, and everything like that. But 
just send me a message if you can't find anything, okay? All right, so let's see, we had, uh, there was a question about shall. Okay, guys, here's what you need to understand about shall. Shall is old, all right? That's from Shakespeare. Shakespeare said shall. We don't say shall today, all right? So my first reaction to a question about shall is, don't use shall. That's, that's first. Now, I know that a lot of textbooks out there still use shall, and for that reason, I'm going to explain what shall really is. So in Old English, verbs changed a lot differently than how they change now. Um, like in most other languages, there was a different form of the verb for each person. So I was a different form of the verb, and you had a different form, and he had it. So today in English, it's much easier, right? We can just say, I run, she runs, it runs, you run, we run, they run. It's just run, 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 and then for he, she, and it, we add S, right? But, uh, but that's not the case anymore, right? If we talk about shall, then that's not the case. So shall goes back to the time of uh, Shakespeare when there were different verb endings. And so for the verb to be, we had the verb shall, which was to be in the future, like will today. And we can only say shall with I and with you. So we can only say I shall or you shall. We can't say, sorry, not you shall. We can only say I shall or we shall. We cannot say you shall, we cannot say he shall, we cannot say they shall, okay? It's not correct. The best rule is just don't you shall. All right, let's see, your name sounds like Greek. Are you Greek? Um, my name is Chris Huntley. I don't think that sounds Greek. Uh, it's actually an English name, um, but, uh, but most of my family is German. Irish and English, you know, before they moved to the United States. But, uh, you know, my family's been living in the United States for four, five generations. So, you know, I'm American. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else? Sent you a private message, thanks for the video. Okay, I'll answer you as soon as I finish this video, all right? Where is the correct place of adverbs in the sentence? When adverbs are with adjectives, adverb has to be in front of or behind the adjective. Okay, about adverbs, that's, you know, that's a big discussion because there's actually different types of adverbs and different types of adverbs go in different positions in the sentence. So I can't give you a simple answer. But um, for example, if we talk about adverbs of frequency, how often we do something, then this usually goes um, before the verb, but if we have if we have the verb to be, then these adverbs go after the verb, all right? It's pretty complicated, and, you know, I feel like uh, it would be better just to watch the video about adverb placement. And uh, so go to my YouTube channel. It's in the description to this video, and or you can add me on Facebook, and I'll send you the link, okay? Uh, what else? How can I improve my word list the best? Okay, word list. We don't say word list. We say vocabulary. And if you want to improve your vocabulary, you need to read a lot. And, you know, the internet, Facebook, this will help you so much. Just find either a group about news, about current events, or about something that you're interested in. You know, if you like uh, philosophy, find a philosophy group on Facebook. And go there, join it, and just start writing comments and, and talking to people there, okay? That's the best way. Just jump in and talk to people. Now, a lot of people have been writing me questions about, about how to improve speaking or conversation or things like that, or writing. Um, so I'm gonna tell you this uh, small tip, and it's actually something that a lot of people pay me money for. I mean, they, they pay for lessons with me, and this is one of the tips that I give all of my students. So this is a secret, and I'm sharing it with you. Don't tell anybody else. Um, but Really, the best way to improve your language or, or to improve any skill is to motivate yourself more. 
Um, now that's not the, that's not all of my answer. So don't, don't uh, get upset yet when you think that, you know, I gave you such a simple answer to improve anything. You need to motivate yourself more. How are you going to motivate yourself more in order to speak English, right? How are you going to motiv motivate yourself more, um, in order to improve this skill? Well, what you're going to do, if you want to learn English more effectively, you're going to find an activity that you do five, 10 minutes every day okay find an activity that you do a few minutes every day at least every day or maybe you do it a couple times every day like driving a car or washing the dishes and when you have that activity the next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to associate that activity with something in english so if you're washing the dishes you could be watching a youtube video in english if you're driving in the car, you could be listening to an audiobook in English. All right, just make it a rule in your head. You need to make a mental rule in your head that every time you do this activity, you do something in English. All right, a lot of parents use this with their kids and they say, you can play video games only if you play them in English. So kids are really happy, excited to learn and to play, right? And then they associate playing with learning. And then they start to associate positive emotions and they get this motivation to learn English because now they can play their game better if they know English better, right? And in life, <laughs> our game is usually business or maybe you know relationships or something like that. And that's what we want to improve. Um, we want to improve our conversation skills, our speaking skills, our writing skills, specifically for business or for traveling or for relationships, right? So we need to start associating some kinds of activities with English and only do those things in English. That's how you're going to improve any of your skills to learn English, okay? So I hope that answers a lot of the questions that were asked about that. But, uh, okay, let's see. Next question. Are you American? You speak very clear English. Can you explain phrasal verbs? You're in luck. Uh, yes, I'm American, native speaker. I mean, I've been speaking English all my life. Um, I try to speak clearly so people can understand me, right? Makes sense. But uh, about phrasal verbs. So my YouTube channel, you can find the link in the description to this video. My, my YouTube channel has 366 phrasal verb videos, all right? For one year, I made a phrasal verb video every day. And you can go to my YouTube channel and you can get those videos for free. And now I've started making a video every day about idioms in English. So if you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel, just go there right now, click the button, subscribe, and you'll learn a ton of English because all of my lessons are, you know, like what I'm doing now, this is just question and answer. The videos are about specific topics. You'll learn a lot. Go there, subscribe right now, and add me on Facebook too. Okay, add me to your friends. So let's see, uh, somebody else is explaining about shall. I, I explained about shall, just don't use shall, okay? That's the easiest, just don't use shall. Shall is only used for I and we, and today we don't use it. That's Shakespeare, that's old, we don't use it. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Another question here. Hi, how long did it take to improve? Uh, I don't really understand this question. If you could write this question again, maybe with a different question, as a different question, that'd be better. Improve what? Um, or do you mean how long will it take you to improve your English? It will take you as long as, you know, you have to put in the work. You have to do the work. If you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. So just listening to me talk on Facebook, it's not going to change anything for you. Uh, let's see. What's your YouTube name? Just click the video that you're watching right now, click the video, and in the description, in the information about this video, you'll see the link. You'll see all of the links to my YouTube channels and, and other pages and everything like that. Uh, let's see, Alma writes, yes, it makes sense. You speak English so clearly, unlike others, they speak very slang, sometimes can't understand the words. Well, Alma, what can I say? Um, I'm a professional English teacher. I've been doing this for 10 years. I have several teaching businesses and I teach other teachers how to teach English. I'm a, I'm a teaching coach and I'm a business coach. So 
you know, it's important to speak clearly. And uh, I understand that not all native speakers speak as clearly as I do. That's okay. You can still understand them as long as you learn the basics of the language. So, um, so yeah. So if you have any questions about that, if you want to study with me, if you want to learn how to be a teacher, if you want to learn how to teach English better also, you can send me a message, you can write me, and, you know, I'd love that. Let's see, Monique writes, I can't add you on Facebook, you already have a friend's limit. So, okay, Monique, uh, yes, you're right, I probably hit the friend's limit there. Just follow me on Facebook, and you can still send me a message, and I'll write you back. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, great. So, all of you guys out there, I see that you're asking some more questions. Let's see, Jacob writes, how do Americans understand people who say he, sing, eat, etc., without S in the verb? Is it important to remember to use it? Uh, good question. Actually, it's not very important. If you say he run instead of he runs, most people are going to understand you. But it's not natural and it's not clear because it's not correct. So for he, she, and it, we always add S. About I run, you run, they run, everybody will understand this. There's no, there's no problem. You know, I understand that probably in your language or, you know, in different languages, um, that's when people, in different languages, there are different endings for these verbs, right? Instead of I run, you run, it's I run with an ending, and then you run with an ending, right? The verbs change to show who's speaking. In English, it's enough just to say pronouns, like I, you, he, she, it, we, they. Um, so yeah, that's it. That, that's all we need, just those words. Uh, let's see. Next. Chris, hi. I'd like to improve my English. So I ask you, can you send some places to speak English orally, verbally? You want to practice speaking English. The best way to practice speaking English is, there's number one. I'll tell you the free one first. Speak English for free. Practice for free. Find someone on Facebook, okay? Don't be afraid to go to groups where there's only native speakers and only English speakers and find a topic that you like talking about or something that you're interested in and just start writing there and just start talking to people and you know you can find different reasons to to speak with people all right I have a lot of friends who are trying to learn English they use video games uh, I, I know a lot of girls who watch fashion or design or uh, videos about makeup and they start talking to people in groups that's fine you know that's how you're going to learn you need to talk to people now if you feel like you have specific questions and you can't just find someone to talk to, you can write me, you can send me a message, and, you know, we can talk about having lessons. But um, just know that, you know, I'm a professional teacher, and when I send you my answer, it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be free. So if you want the free option, I'll tell you how to do that. Go do that. That's fine, okay? But if you want um, lessons with me, then just send me a message, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, let's see, do you know any podcasts or link to download listening conversation dialogues? So guys, if you want stuff that you can download, if you want uh, you know, a step-by-step -step course that teaches you speaking, pronunciation, everything, if you want to learn you know, the basic package of English, the stuff that you need to know to start talking and meeting people and doing stuff right now, you can add me, go to my YouTube channel, you'll see a lot of the answers to your questions because when I'm reading these questions, I see that, you know, I have a video about that, I have a video about that, I have a video about that. Just go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, and you'll find the answer. And if you want those other things that you're asking about, send me a message because, you know, I can probably help you out with that. And in fact, I know some teachers who, you know, they need some practice. So. We can even talk about having, you know, discounted lessons, or we can even talk about having some free groups. So just send me a message if that's something that you're interested in, and I will definitely uh, help you out. I'll answer you. As soon as we finish this video, I'm going to answer all of your questions. All right. Let's see. Teacher, can you explain me something about interview? How can I be prepared? Great question. I, let's see. I think it was just last week I helped prepare someone for an interview. I've actually got a, a video of them saying thanks to me. Um, so I'll put that up on my website. And uh, guys, you know, how are you going to be prepared for an interview? 
confidence, motivation. And, you know, I've, I've prepared lots of people for lots of interviews, people who need to go work in big top banks and airline companies and, uh, yeah, people who wanted to get transferred to work in another country. I've helped lots of people do that. So send me a message if that's something you're interested in and, and we can definitely get you ready for that interview. Make sure that you get that position. Great. Let's see. I love traveling a lot and I do it as much as I can. I improve my English just to travel around the world. Sometimes I think I should try to move to the land of native speakers because talking with no native, I didn't improve my correct English, but I just got the fluency. Okay, Francesco, I understand definitely. Um, I'll answer that in one second. Andrea says, where can I send a message to you? Facebook. Just send it straight to my, to my uh, Facebook page, all right? So yeah, traveling around the world, move to, a, move to the place where the native speakers are. That's a great, great, great way to do it. When I moved to Russia and started teaching there, I was teaching English every day, so I was speaking English all the time, but just living there helped me learn the language. And now I can speak some Russian, and it's great. So um, let's see, Inesio says, do you teach using Skype? I teach using everything, Inesio. I teach using everything. Uh, so you know, um, I think I told you before that I have some resources for teachers, and if you want to learn how to become a better teacher, and if you want to learn how to get students that you can teach, um, and if you want to learn how to have your own teaching business, then I suggest that you go to this website because it's going to help you out a lot. And there's a free mini course there. You can go through it, and, and yeah. Great. Let's see. Amir says, your Facebook page? My Facebook page is facebook.com slash chrisamericos. Or you can just click on the video that you're watching right now, and then you'll see the description of the video. In the description of the video, you can find all of my links. All right? So let's see. Here's another question. Where are you from? I am from the United States. <laughs> I'm from the United States, from America. I think you can hear my, my accent when I'm speaking. Let's see. Magda wrote a question. Should in the past... Uh -huh, I think I understand this question. Should in the past is should have. Because should is what, what we call a modal verb. So when we put it in the past, we need to add have, like with other modal verbs. Like, I should have told him about the party earlier. Right? This is should in the past. We can use the same idea with, uh, with, with might. He might have forgotten my address. So this is might in the past, or may in the past. He may have forgotten my address, right? Uh, great. So let's see. Inesio, you're welcome, dude. Thanks for writing. Let's see. Next. Do you think it's better to learn American English or British English? Well, guys, it really depends on what your goal is, what you want to do with your English. I mean, if you're going to move to the UK, learn British English. If you're going to move to the US, learn American English. It's as simple as that. But, you know, just for your general knowledge of English, it's probably, probably best to know both. Because if you learn both, then you'll understand everything. All right? Let's see. What else? Alma, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. If you want to learn English, just send me a message. Um, let's see. Next. You look like a Russian. I got shocked. <laughs> well, maybe it's from all the time that I spent over there. But, uh, you know, I'm American and... I live here now. Alexander writes, how many Bitcoins do you have? <laughs> Great question, Alexander. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to answer that one. But let's just say that you can never have enough. So, okay, guys, it looks like all the serious questions have come to an end. And um, now, uh, let's see. I see some more questions coming in, but we're going to call this, uh, we're going to call this the end of the video now. I'm going to come back and I'm going to do this regularly. I'm going to have a video sometimes about learning English and sometimes about teaching English. So what I need you to do right now is if you thought that this video was useful, I need you to just send me a message and tell me, hey, I liked your video. Can you talk about this next time? All right. Just tell me what you want to hear about next time and I'll talk about that next time. And, you know, it's free. So why not? I mean, I'm doing this for free on Facebook. Anybody can watch, and I hope it really helps you guys. But um, 
Yeah, so I want you guys to just send me a message and tell me what you want to hear about next time. If you're a teacher of English, send me a message and say you're a teacher and you want access to the free mini course about how to start your teaching business. And if you are a student of English, then uh, send it to me. Send me the topic that you want to hear about next time and make sure you join those groups and the YouTube channel. All right. Let's see. I guess I'm looking for one more video. And uh, sorry, <laughs> one more video. I'm looking for one more question from uh, Vittoria uh, Ferreira. So if you can write your question again, um, then go ahead and write it there and I'll try to answer it. Jocelyn says, Can you send me a message, please? You know, there's um, there's so many comments on this video right now. I don't think I'll be able to find it, but you can always send it to me. My link is in the description to this video. You can find me at uh, facebook.com slash chrisamericos. And yeah, you can add me. You can send me a message. So make sure you do that, and I will get right back to you. Let's see. Victoria wrote, what's the best way to give feedback? The best way to give feedback, feedback about what, Vittoria? What are you talking about specifically? What kind of feedback? What kind of feedback are you talking about? Well, guys, as soon as this video is finished, as soon as I turn it off, I'm going to go answer all those questions, and I'm going to answer all the messages that you sent me. So um, it's still not too late. Just send me all your messages. And I've got a bunch of free stuff to help you out with. So, you know, can't go wrong. Why not do it, right? Why not? Uh, let's see. Waiting for Vittoria to answer, and then that'll be the last question, and I'll be out of here. Let's see. Abdul wrote, you're welcome or you're welcome, which is correct. You're welcome with an apostrophe. You, apostrophe, are welcome. You are welcome. So let's see. Vittoria, come on. What kind of feedback were you talking about? Answer before we finish up this video. Let's see. How can I check my mistakes when I'm translating different stories? Annie writes, well, you can send them to me and someone can help. That's one way. Or you can, you know, write me a message and, and say that you want to hear about that next time. Because, all right, it looks like Victoria uh, got lost somewhere, so we're not going to be able to answer her question. It wasn't very clear. So... Um, let's see. Jan writes, please say hello to my girlfriend, Monica. She'd be very pleased. Hello, Monica. Sorry, it's the end of the video. Make sure you send me a message and we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about next time. All right, guys. Thank you for watching today and never give up studying English. It's all about motivation. It's all about making yourself do it. All right. Uh, if I didn't answer your question, if you wrote something and I didn't answer it, send me a message. Add me to your friends, and we'll get to it, all right? Keep up the motivation. Never give up. Keep studying English. Thank you guys so much for watching today and for being here, and I look forward to seeing you next time. All right?